supporter and producer, last year decided to open your own communications agency to help other Chinese professionals to gain exposure in the U.S. But you still work as a media professional yourself, going after touching stories. If you could define yourself to me using one word, what would it be? Um, positive. Be confident with yourself. Be positive about life, and go for what you believe in in the future. With roughly five years of experience in media, Yu Han Liu had worked for names like China Daily, ESPN, and the Observer Media Corporation. But in 2014, Yu Han accepted a position at the New York Times. We should be contributing to an investigation about practices of the nail salon industry, entitled "The Price of Nice Nails." Last year, you went through some professional changes. You were in China. You came back to the U.S. You're the collaborator for a big New York Times expose, which just came out actually, and it was pretty historical because it was actually one of the first stories. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was the first story, a New York、mm. Times story that was trending over the weekend on Twitter,、mm. ever, <laughs> because you know over the weekend they normally read print, not online.、Mm. So a lot of people were shocked by the story. A lot of people were surprised. Some good reactions, some bad reactions. Just a lot of buzz generally. How did you get involved with the story? Uh, well,、um, it was early last year in 2014. I was、mm-hmm. still working for、uh, Observer Media,、um, and I worked as one of his an editors for a,、uh, a Chinese English bilingual magazine as the editor.、Um, and then、um, I I was. I was told that there might be some opportunity to get participated in a、uh, year-long New York Times、um, investigation、um, program, and then I was very, I was pretty thrilled. And then I continued to follow up、um, with、uh, Sarah Neer, and then、uh, I finished a few trial assignments. And after a few rounds of interviews, I finally got the position as a、uh, reporter slash translator. So I was. Very excited, and then we started、um, working on that project、uh, together. And we went to Flushing in Queens,、uh, and then we waited in some some certain you know pickup spots、um, in some of the uh, uh, intersections, and we just waited、uh, to see、um, if there are some. Potential manicures show up and during the in the morning time, maybe from you know eight、uh, to nine a.m.、Um, if you see some lady with a lunchbox in their hand, and then, well, you know, nine out of ten that they are the manicures. So we we need to be very very brave, and we we needed to、uh, step up and、um, just ask bluntly sometimes, are you? By any chance, a manicurist, and then yeah, some of some are yeah, some of them are are, are really、uh, working in that profession, and then we started talking to them. Of course, we got a lot of rejections, and because they didn't really want to speak up and、um, tell their stories,、uh, but yes, there are some of them who are very brave enough to share with us their stories. How were you presented the story? Were you the first one to based in China to come here? How did they present to you the story? Uh, well, yes, I was the、uh, the first Chinese contributor,、mm-hmm. and then later we have another、uh, member join our team. Okay. So altogether there were six、uh, yeah, re- reporter six translators. Yeah. Yes.、Uh, and I was still back in China because、uh-huh. it was the、uh, Chinese New Year,、uh, yeah. the Spring Festival、uh, celebration during that time. And then I got an email saying that I might be able to、uh, get involved in this project. And then I just instantly purchased a、uh, a ticket. A A, an air ticket and to fly back, and then yeah, I had the interviews,、uh, and then I passed all the interviews, and then we just started、uh, instantly. You considered giving up, even though you're a pretty valuable player, you know, to the story. When you first heard about the story, did you consider that you would be eventually would get as difficult as it got? That you would actually, you know. Consider giving up that it was something they would 
consider quitting the... Not at all. You know, um, when I first heard about mm -hmm. um, this project, um, of course, the New York Times, you know, um, well, the title um, of um, a um, contributor or, or translator or, or reporter, whatever you call it, to the New York Times is um, huge. Yeah, <laughs> it's big enough to attract me, and uh, I didn't really expect it to attract so much attention from worldwide um, media. And uh, later, the story continued to evolve, and then I realized there there were a lot of challenges and difficulties for me to con uh, to encounter. And I remember one time that I was told to, um, you know, look into one of the, those uh, illegally sublist apartments. And then I was by myself and, and after I knocked it on the door and then I, I was totally shocked because I saw one of our interviewees, he was living with 12 strangers in a one bedroom apartment. And this, um, I still remember this uh, interviewee, uh, his name is Brian, and because he's living with too many people, um, he doesn't feel secure uh, at all. So every time I see him, he is carrying a backpack. And one day I asked him, what is in your backpack? And he said, there is my toothpaste, my shampoo, and my toilet paper, and the $2,000 cash, which is all I have in America. Yeah. So basically, you have to carry all. They had to yeah. carry all their possessions with them at all times right. because they feared so much. Yeah, because uh, they can't really afford um, to live in a better apartment, and you know, maybe just living with one one person or or living on his own because that you know, living um, the rent, the cost is very expensive in New York City, and um, they manicures don't really make a lot of money. Um, so they they chose to uh, sacrifice their personal life, and then yeah, there are so many are living like that in you know in Queens. How were you and the other journalists able to maintain your objectivity, your sense of? you know, perspective and distance, detach yourself almost mm -hmm. from everything and not get too emotional, too involved with a story that made so many people, so many readers emotional. Uh, well, we understand our roles and uh, we, our, our mission is um, listening to their stories and uh, telling those stories. So uh, during those interviews, um, uh, we, we keep that in mind all the time and uh, we just need the facts. But um, although there are some emotional moments, we bear that um, in my heart. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. The article created so much so much buzz around so many different issues um, in terms of exploitation, tax evasion, industry regulations, which are completely overlooked. But I feel like when the race card was brought up, that hit people on a different level. Where do you think that Chinese people, as a Chinese immigrant, stand in the industry? What do you think can be done now? Um. I don't know if I'm uh, qualified enough to uh, give a comment on mm -hmm. that uh, issue, but um, on a, again, on a personal level, um, I well, I didn't really expect um, how much buzz this story will be creating, but it was really, um, it was very exciting to see. Um, there are so many changes. There are the uh, emergency measures taken by the uh, um, by the government on a local level, on a state level. Um, um, and I still remember last week, and I was given another assignment to uh, to follow up on the um, you know the volunteering uh, activities um, by the uh, by the government, and uh, I saw uh, you know all of all of those volunteers giving out flyers and to potential manicures and and um, educating them uh, about their legal rights. And um, uh, while I was still reporting on that story and. Uh, one manicurist came up and uh, grabbed my, my arm, telling me that, you know, I don't want you to use my full Chinese name, but I'm really thankful for what you have done for us. So that was a very, um, that was a very touching moment.